What's up everybody, my name is Zura and I'm the Codeholic. In this video we're going to install Docker on Windows, set up WSL and install Ubuntu, and set up complete working environment on Windows 10 using Docker and WSL Ubuntu. Before we start, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe if you are not yet for more videos like this. Alright, let's start! If you want to see a written documentation how to install Docker on your Windows machine, you can check the following link, which will be in the description. First of all, let's have a look at the system requirements. The very first and the most important requirement is to enable virtualization in your machine. You can have a look at the detailed things right here, but the first thing I had to do was to enable virtualization from BIOS. To check if virtualization is enabled on your machine, you can open Task Manager, go in the Performance section, and right here you see virtualization is enabled. You can install Docker without WSL2 and Linux operating system, but in this video we're going to set up and make it working with WSL2 as well. In both cases, whether you're going to run it with WSL2 or without, you need to have at least Windows 10 64-bit version 2004 or higher, or Windows 11. But let's now click this Docker Desktop for Windows button and install that. As soon as Docker Desktop is downloaded, I'm going to click on that and follow the steps. We need to click OK right here and wait. OK, Docker Desktop was successfully installed. I'm going to click Close right here. Now, let's open it. When you open it very first time, it will give you the following model. You need to accept the terms, so I'm going to click Accept right here. And here is my Docker engine starting. If you have any issues or problems so far, let me know in the comment section down below. Now, let's skip this tutorial and let's uh, run the following command to see how the Docker is actually running. Let's open PowerShell and paste this. Hit Enter. Let's wait a couple of seconds until this is done. Now let's analyze what happened right here. So we run docker run with D and P. What does that mean? We're going to run docker getty getting started image on the following port that's going to be the inner port, that's going to be the outer port, using detached mode. It couldn't find this local this image locally, so it started pulling th from the Docker Hub, and then finally it's going to run. So if you now open in browser localhost, we're going to see this Docker tutorial getting started section that is running using our uh, command. If you type right here docker ps, it's going to give you all running containers. If you want to stop a container, you need to run docker stop in the container ID. I'm going to show you how you can actually stop the container or delete from docker desktop. In my opinion, uh, docker desktop is a very, very handy tool on Windows machine. So right here you see all your containers running, right here you see all your images, in this case we only have one image. Let's go in the container section, you can go inside, just clicking on that and see all the output you get right there. Let's go back and from here you can just stop or start the CLI or restart or delete or open in a browser. So in this case I'm going to just stop this. Okay, so far so good. Why do we need to install WSL2? Because in some cases you are going to build your Docker image with certain commands which is only available on Linux. For example, if you go on the Laravel installation link and grab the following thing, and that's not specified uh, specific to Laravel only, that, that's, that's going to happen to any programming language or framework which you want to install using Docker. So right here we need to have CRL command, we can download that and run it. CRL is not supported by default on terminals of uh, Windows like PowerShell or CMD. Even if you make it available, then it's going to apply bash right here, and that bash uses right there sudo, and you are not going to make it without WSL2 and Linux operating system. Believe me, I tried it. Okay, now we need to enable WSL2 on our Windows and install it, and install also Linux operating system. For properly installing WSL on your operating system, you can find the official documentation from Microsoft. We see right here the same v Windows version 2004 or higher, or Windows 11, as we had on the Docker. I'm going to put this link in the video description. If you need just anything, you can check it out right here. Now, we need to go in Windows Features 
and check right here. Let's go down below. And right here we see Windows subsystem for Linux. Sometimes this might be disabled for you and you need to enable the following features. So just tick that check checkbox, click OK. If the Windows asks you to restart, reboot your system, go ahead and restart and reboot. Now let's open PowerShell. We need to open it as an administrator. Let's clear up everything and let's list existing distributions. So WSL dash L dash V. And we see right here, Docker desktop is running with Docker desktop data as well. Now I'm going to install Ubuntu. I'm going to clear up everything and run WSL dash dash install dash D to specify the distribution name. And right here, I'm going to type Ubuntu, which is one of the available distribution name. As soon as we run this, it's going to start downloading Ubuntu. As soon as this is done, it's going to pop up Ubuntu screen and asks you to enter new Unix username. I'm going to call this Sura. I think the name should be all lowercase, so I'm going to call it lowercase URAM. Let's specify password. Okay, now I'm already in my Linux system. I can type any Linux command like pwd ls dash la, and we see all the files and folders I have right there. I can run cat to just open any like bash, bash rc file, and I basically have every Linux, every Ubuntu command. If you want to see what other distributions are supported in WSL, you can run WSL-L-O and it's going to give you right here Ubuntu, Debian, Kali Linux um, and, and others. Okay. Now, since we have our Ubuntu installed, what are we going to do? Well, this is my working environment. So I'm going to create right here www folder, navigate inside, and that's going to be my working directory for any kind of project. And now we need to integrate our WSL to Ubuntu operating system into Docker desktop. And let's type Docker right here. The Docker command is not available. Let's actually open now Docker desktop. So right here we have it. I'm going to close this. Let's go in the settings from this gear icon and go in the resources and down below we see this WSL integration. Okay. Right here we see Ubuntu is basically disabled. Let's click apply and restart. Now let's close this and now let's type Docker once again in our Ubuntu. And now we see all Docker commands available. Now I'm going to make any project right here, but how can I open this using VS code? Basically I can type code. Uh, let me actually create folder mkdir node, for example, and then I'm going to open node folder using VS code. And if we bring up the terminal right here, we see that this comes from WSL uh, folder. Okay, Ubuntu Home Zura. So right here we have possibility to choose the different terminals and I'm going to switch to Ubuntu WSL. And that's going to give me Ubuntu's actual integrated terminal, the same one which I have right here. And I can run any Linux command I want. Now if you open Laravel installation using cell services, which uses Docker behind and grabs the using the CURL and runs bash using sudo commands as well, that should work. Everything should work basically because we have fully fu fully working Linux operating system. I'm going to open Ubuntu, navigate into www folder and paste this. And I'm going to hit enter. Okay. It couldn't find the following image locally. So it's going to start downloading that. It also uses PHP 8.1 version. And basically if you are running this the very first time and creating the very first Laravel application using Docker, it's going to take a lot of time. Right here, I need to provide my Ubuntu password and hit enter. Now my Laravel project was created. Let's navigate inside the folder and start the project by running vendor bin sale app. The very first time you're going to run this, it's going to take some time because it has to download Docker images first and then create containers out of these images. Okay. Our Laravel application has been started. So let's open localhost in the browser and we see Laravel application right there. Okay. Let's open Docker desktop and see what containers have been started. Okay. Right here is our example app. We see example app Laravel, Redis and MySQL. So we have a full application with databases ready with Redis and MySQL also ready. If you want to stop your containers, you can click the stop button right here or open Ubuntu and just hit Ctrl and C right here. It's going to take a couple of seconds until the processes actually are killed and the containers are stopped. And the next day, whenever you want to start the project, you're going to open Ubuntu, 
navigate into www example folder and from here you can run vendor bean sale app okay now i want to show you a few more things what if i want to access my linux file system using windows explorer that is also possible which i use very often so i'm going to write here explorer dot exe and dot which indicates the current folder so i want to open the current folder using explorer and here it is opened look at the path it comes from the wsl ubuntu home so that's the linux file system and if i want to open the following project example up the following laravel application using php store i'm going to right click on that and click on this open folder as php store or i can even grab the following path open php store click new project from existing files choose the source files are in a local directory no web server is configured yet and paste your path right here open example up and click on finish here is our example app opened using PHP Storm. And if you open terminal right here, we are actually using uh, Ubuntu's native terminal. So PWD, which indicates home zero. So basically PHP Storm is also integrated with WSL2 and it identifies that the path comes from WSL and it successfully opens that. Well, basically, if you grab the following path, you can open the following project in any editor or ID you want using PyCharm or IntelliJ or whatever. And there's a quick hint, which I generally do. So you can right click on Ubuntu and pin to quick access, which gives you possibility to easily access your Ubuntu file system whenever you need that. Okay, or you can add even www into pin to quick access. And whenever you want that, you can easily open that. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, hit the thumbs up if you enjoy the video. In my upcoming videos, we're going to create applications using Docker and WSL Ubuntu. If you're interested, hit the subscribe for more videos. Thanks again and see you in the next time.